Here are the examples for solving torque problems using the method that considers magnitudes first. Before continuing, make sure to review all materials and videos introducing torque, and example problem solving that uses the consistent coordinate method. When using a consistent coordinate method, we set up our diagrams with a polar coordinate system, and then when we consider angles, we already include the negative sign relative to that coordinate system. We leave Newton's second law in a completely positive row form and let the algebra and plug in of the negative angles take care of a solution that makes physical sense. In the alternative method that will be demonstrated here, we will only care about the magnitude of the angles and hence torques and will insert the positive and negative direction in the torque equation. In the first example, we have two forces acting on a door of different magnitude, radial distance, and angle. We start by reading the problem, looking for all the relevant quantities for radial distance, magnitude of force, and angle. We draw the free body diagram with the magnitude and direction of forces where they are applied and in what direction they are applied in. We also set up the coordinate systems. We make a list of the relevant variables. Note that in this solution method, we only care about the magnitude of the angle and hence torque at first. We do not include the sign yet. We declare Newton's second law And it is at this step where we look back at our diagram and consider which force produces a positive 
and which force produces a negative torque. We solve this equation for the unknown. Plug in with units and check that any positive and negative signs cancel in such a way that the answer is physically sensible. We then reread the problem and answer the question. In this example, it is the magnitude that tells us that the hero must keep running or find a way to weaken the werewolf. Revisiting the same steps for the second example, we read the problem for the variables and what it is asking for. Make unit conversions as necessary. Set up the free body diagram for each force as well as the coordinate systems. And then check the magnitude of all variables. The direction is not inserted here. Rather, it is at the next step when we apply Newton's second law. We solve for the unknown algebraically and plug in with units. Note that you can already start checking whether the answer is sensible in sign because we are expecting the grinding wheel to slow down. Hence, the sign of the angular acceleration must be opposite that of the initial angular velocity. Finish up by considering angular kinematics and solve for the unknown that is being asked for before rereading the problem and checking against the picture to make sure you have answered the question.